Hello, everybody. Zong gets in 134 here. Average Joe Squad here. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Hyphen and the show where we look at comic books, movies, and everything in between. <laughs> it takes us 20 minutes to get started. <laughs> yeah, all. It takes us. Adam's been talking my ear off the whole night. <laughs> Adam, you dropped your fork. What are you doing? <laughs> Listen, I introduced him to some of my memes. So anyway, um, now we're, we're uh, making another episode of the uh, James Bond retrospective, the Bond's perspective, if you will. Um, and this one's going to be kind of short because we're only doing one film. Uh, we're doing the only film by uh, George Lazenby as Bond. Uh, we're doing... On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Uh... Some people actually consider it to be, like, one of their favorite Bond films. Um, I'm not one of them. I, I, I'm kind of not either. Like, okay. So, before you really get into this, I, I kind of want to talk a little bit of backstory about this movie. Because it, it is it is Lazenby, but he actually, it's technically in between two Connery films. Because after Thunderball, Connery had, it was Thunderball, right? Yes. Yeah. Wait a minute, did Connery not, not only live twice, but thrice? Yes. Um, we still haven't reviewed Never Say Never Again? No, I know. We'll, we'll get there. Um, so, basically, after Thunderball, Connery decided he didn't want to keep doing them because he was afraid, I think, of typecasting for the most part. Hey, he'd just kind of gotten tired of it. And he'd gotten tired of it, too. So, they started looking for other Bonds. I, I know they had a couple of other choices they had had at that point. But they considered Clint Eastwood at one point. Yeah, they could. <laughs> Which I'm like, bruh. What, are you going you gonna to do John Wayne? <laughs> they also considered Burt Reynolds. I, I mean, I, I think Burt would have been, could have been okay. But I... The idea of Clint Eastwood as, as Bond, Bond is just... It's up there with the fact that um, before they ca uh, cast Brosnan for Goldeneye, they were considering yeah. Liam Neeson. <laughs> Which I'm like, man, that would have been epic. That would have been, been a really different film. <laughs> Like, like, Grant, I could I could see him pulling it off. I mean, it but, wouldn't be bad, but like that, I think Goldeneye would feel a lot different with ne with Neeson. Kill the girl. She means nothing to me. <laughs> My name is Bond. I have a particular set of skills. But uh, yeah, so it's you pronounced had, James Al Ghul. So you had um, you had Connor. He got entire role. So they decided on this Australian model well, and George La Lazenby. Yes and no. At least at how Lazenby tells it. So, they're doing, like, you know, interviews and, like, auditions to try and get the new Bond. Lazenby really wanted to do it because he knew it would be good for his career. So, what he did was he went to, like, the same place that, Bond, like, Sean Connery gets, to, like, his suits tailored. Got, like, like, a suit that he would wear. Went to the same barber that Connery went to and got his hair styled like Connery's. And he wasn't even in the auditions. He literally just walked in there... And they're like, who are you? And he's like, I'm your next James Bond. And now, now, who, now who's told this? Lazenby. So take this with a grain of salt. This is how Lazenby The, the one I've it. heard was it was from the... The, the, yeah. the one I heard was from Broccoli and Saltzman. Was that was, yeah, that which, was who's which, told, told this one. Yeah, so, so they just like, plucked him. Like I said, this is just Lazenby. So take it with a grain of salt. It's but one of those things where it's like, we might not ever really have the, the, right, the right answer. answer. So... I would probably argue what you're going to tell me is probably more accurate, but that's that's how Lazenby told they, me. They just picked him because he looked looked the part. Really. Yeah, which I guess does kind of like flash with what I said because he literally made himself look the part. Yeah, and so they came out with this. Now, On Her Majesty's Secret Service is technically the most accurate to its book Which is why a lot of people, I think, consider it their favorite. Yes. As someone who's read the books or is in the process of reading them, Man, I've I've heard that that book's really fucking dull. Yeah. Or but like, uh, real. I, I mean, spoiler in case you haven't already deduced it. I don't like this movie. Yeah, I I can't really but, say um, I like it much either. To me, this movie is an example of just because it worked as a book. Yeah. Doesn't mean that doing a like a straight up translation is to the film is not gonna. It's not gonna always work. No. Um. Like it, it's really annoying too because not only is it it it's accurate. It's accurate to the point where it contradicts the films, because Thunderball is the first time that Connery ever met, or not, not um, 
Only lived twice is the first time he ever yeah, he met. only lived twice. On Her Majesty's Secret Service, which this book comes before those two in novel novels, is actually the first time Bond ever met him. And he still fe seems to think that this is the first time they he's ever met him in this movie. Which again, Thunderball and You Only Live Twice occurred before this, though. Yeah. And so... Yeah, it, it really, to me, is a case of... Just because it worked as a book doesn't mean it will work as a, as a film. Yeah. A film and a book are, like, very two very, very different mediums. Yeah. So, which I think was just... Overall, man, like, this movie, it, to me, it was just very, very dull. Yeah. Like, there were... I was I was at home watching it, and I hadn't seen this movie in a long, long time. Like, yeah. I had seen it before, but it had been so long. Like We actually held off on reviewing this. Yeah. Because I was like, I want to wait until, like, I can, like, watch this on a day off. That way I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, that and also some other projects we were doing had yeah. come up, too, that we're, we wanted there, to do more. There were entire patches of this movie where, like... I just zoned the hell out because it, there was just nothing going on. And only that, like the 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 plot, like like the the the, the plot that Spectre's doing isn't even really important to the narrative. Like the the, the bigger po the bigger portion of this plot follows Bond and his romancing of his wife. Um, what, what is her name? Tracy. Again? Tracy. Yeah, Tracy Milbanks. I believe that's who it is. Yeah. Um, played by da Diana Rigg of the Avengers fame. Yeah. The TV show, which probably. Is it, we talked about that on Lost Media that there was uh, there were some episodes that are, yeah. that are deemed there's, lost. there's like huge chunks of that series that's Which missing. I, and it's hard to get on DVD and yeah. DVD because like I own I own the episode that they used as a basis for the Hellfire Club, mm -hmm. and I think that ran me like twenty five dollars just getting yeah, that set, that. and it wasn't even that <clears throat> in that great of a shape. Yeah, especially because like British TV shows are weird because like like classic Doctor Who you can't get like the series like it used to be you couldn't get them in full series. Like, you would have to get, like, each story, like, separately. Like, you... So, like, you get all of, like, Genesis of the Daleks or uh, the Spearhead from Space. But, like, you, you would... It was it would take them a while for them to actually put, like, the whole of, like, a Doctor's series in a box set. And even then, those are... Those are pricey. Those will cost you somewhere up to 200 bucks sometimes just for the... Yeah, that's... The whole run. That's out there. Yeah. Um... But getting getting back to like, but yeah, like I I can I can believe that you were bored watching this film because it's it is so slow and there's not a lot of action in it. Yeah, well, and even then, like this was my complaint. Even the action they did show. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you if you noticed this too. Did you notice there were patches where that footage was clearly sped up? Yeah, there's a lot of that. Sped up that footage. threw me out of what I was watching because I was like, this looks so fucking like bad well then it doesn't help that there's a lot of blue screening in this like like yeah, the, like which, the sled scene i mean there's there's fight scenes in all the other bond movies that are real unbelievable but like this yeah. one like I, I kind of again going back to circling back to lazenby's performance like he looks the part but his acting is not the greatest in this like at no part during this film did i really <clears throat> feel like he had the on-stage presence of of Connery or Roger Moore. No, I, Even, like, I would say Dalton had more of an on-screen yeah. presence. Like, it just feels <laughs> like he's kind of there uh, to the point a where, lot like, of the times. Like, the I was like, more interested in, like, Tracy yeah. throughout most of this movie than I was him. Which, I, and even then, I Tracy's kind of weird for me as a Bond girl. Because, like, the first half of this film, she's suicidal and, like, depressed. And then she bangs Bond, and all of a sudden, like, all her troubles are gone. And, like... I don't know. It, it's it's weird. It's just another case of '60s movies not knowing how to write women. Yeah, especially because like, you know, the first half she's depressed and listless, and then the next half she just she's all set set on helping Bond and like, like you know, like the scene where she helps him get away, to, when, like when he's being chased by Spectre. Which that scene is such a weird scene. Where, like the. the Oh my god, are you talking about the fucking skiing shit? Because I was like, yeah. this is so fucking stupid. <clears throat> well, then, like, the very end like, of it where he... It, it's not interesting. Yeah. I, Spy Who Loved Me does it way, way, way be better. Way better, because yeah. Because it's... It, to me, like, a lot of the scenes in this film... I'm gonna see if you agree with me on this. They go on way too oh long. Oh my god, yeah. Like, they didn't know how to... like. The scene when he's at the at the place talking about like the when he's in his role, you know, yeah, as, like, as he's the, a as genealogist. The, the, yeah, that shit was went on way way too fucking long. Yeah, it wasn't interesting. 
It, it wasn't even like. It, well, yeah, because it, it's it just, was just boring. It's just him banging his way through all the women there, which I'm like, aren't you supposed to be like in love now? Like, why the like? Yeah, I'm. Like, like I, said, I mean, I hate I hate to be negative about a Bond movie for yeah. for that, but. I mean, because like, like, I, I, I like movies where there's, you know, there's pacing and there's build up and all that. But in the case of this, it was just a case of like, man, this is boring as all hell. Where the yeah. hell did my phone go? There it is. <laughs> Sorry, my phone dropped. Well, to be but, fair, this car, like, phones just disappear down the seats. Yeah, like, but really it, hard. It was really just a case of like, man, like, I was sitting there, I'm like, do something. Yeah, like, like, come on. Like,. <clears throat> Even like the opening scene I mean, yeah. wasn't really that great. The yeah. song I thought was real forgettable in it. Yeah, this is definitely I think the, the kind of the the start of the really forgettable Bond themes. Yeah, like I mean, actually, I know there's people out there that like rank this as one of their favorites, but I'm like, man, I'm I'm just not one of them because it just didn't grip well, me. I think the reason it is is just simply because of the ending and the memorability of Bond getting married. Which I mean, yeah, that's that's interesting, but like, in order to get there, it's. It is a chore. It's a, it's a slow slog, basically. Yeah, like... It's kind of one of those movies where you kind of have to, like, force yourself to get through it. Yeah. And, you know, and... Granted, I, like, I, I think any everyone else in the film does a good job. Like, I like Q in this. I like M, and, you know... Like, I think I think they do a pretty good job, but, like, man, it... It's so weird. And then, and then like, that, this plot is so dumb. Like, so... Scarlet Mungo wants to like, or not Scarlet Mungo, uh, Blofeld. We're not, we're not there yet. Yeah, we're not there yet. <laughs> that one we actually like, but like Blofeld's plan is to like have these women get hypnotized and release this gas around the world to sterilize everybody for some reason. Yeah, it's like, I, like it, it's so dumb and like, <clears throat> like yeah, and then we spend way too long on that mountain chalet. Like, good lord. Like, to the point where, like, I think they're there long enough that it's Christmas. Which, like, what are you yeah. doing? What have you been doing up here, Bond? He's been fucking everybody's yeah, like, legs, obviously. And, like, he literally, go like, he goes through every single one of them, too. It's it's hilarious. Like, I'm like, I'm like, our... Y'all don't talk? Yeah. The top secret agent, ladies and gentlemen, of MI6. Yeah, so... Like... I will admit, um, if I were to give any positives, I do kind of like the idea of Bond working with the Mafia. Just Having, like, an underworld connection. Yeah. I, I like that, that too. That was kind of cool. That's an interesting, like, angle. But they don't do much they, with it. Yeah, they don't do much with it. Um, Especially because after this after this movie, we never see the that ending again. Is, the, end, the ending, like, battle, like, yeah. where they go to rescue Tracy is kind of cool. It's definitely a lot more interesting and gripping than, like, the, the skiing shit that I had yeah. to sit through for a half hour, it seemed like. Yeah. Um, then, like, I will admit, like, the, the way the film ends is pretty good. Like, you know, like, with, with Bond, like, have, suffering probably one his greatest defeat just because of, like, the loss of his wife. But, like, like, man, it's such a downer ending. And, it's, and what's funny is after the ending, they play the Bond theme. So I'm like, thanks for the mood whiplash. Yeah, like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be, like, like what am I supposed to be feeling, feeling here? here? You know, I, then I, I feel like the title really doesn't really explain anything other than like, you know, yeah, Bond's on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Okay, like that's kind of it. Like it, like that's the only thing that like ties it to being Bond is, is that like it doesn't even like the the name doesn't even really like tie in at all with like the plot. Um. Now, one of the scenes I thought was really weird was that scene where, you know, like, he he meets up with Tracy again after skiing down to the chalet. Like, that scene's really weird to me, like, where he's, like, sitting there on the bench just waiting to get killed. He's, like, afraid. I'm like, that that felt really weird. It was like, I feel like Bond wasn't really that closed in. Yeah. Like, this really doesn't seem like something Bond can't get out of knowing what I've known Bond to get out of in the first six it, films. It, it just feels like a very, very weak script. Yeah. Like, like the you know the bad guy plot's really meh, generic. Generic. Um, like the, the scenes the, the, kind. Of, the pacing is very right. very off, in my opinion. Because yeah, it take like after the the first chase scene, like we spend so long on that beach with Bond and Tracy before like the opening credits, and that I fucking hate this line because everyone tries to use it as 
Well, Bond is actually a code name for the for the for the agent who's 007. You know, after he rescues Tracy and she runs off, and he and you know, Lazenby looks at the camera and goes, "This never happened to the other guy." Yeah, I I hate that line too because I'm of the belief they're all the <clears throat> same person. Yeah. Like, it, it, to anybody that tries to argue it against it, I'm like, then why the fuck does Roger Moore go to Tracy's grave and spy yeah! on me? Like, that argument, that alone tells you that, like, no, that argument is stupid and it doesn't make yeah. sense. Yeah, like, like, the, or like they uh, they bring it up in one of the Timothy T. Dalton movies. And I remember them, like, because he goes to, like one of his like one of the one of his spy friends' wedding. Yeah, and they bring and like his wife's like, why doesn't he ever get married? And he's like, he did, and she got killed by Spectre. Like, well, okay, I don't think they say Spectre because. I want to say at that point they weren't using Spectre. It was probably like results of a lawsuit. Yeah, because um, I know there's a later film where they kill a bald dude, but they never say his name. Yeah, that's in um, <clears throat> um, yeah, he drops like he drops. It's either in for your eyes only or it's Octopussy. I can't yeah. remember which one. I think it's actually Octopussy. Not the watch Octopussy. And it's it's yeah. such it's such a weird like yeah. color on colored opening, and I'm like that doesn't really fit with the rest of this movie. No. Um. This is the second Blofeld, right? What were your opinion on this guy's acting as Blofeld? Uh, I, I, I thought he was convincing. They, they just didn't seem <clears throat> like they gave him a lot to do. I mean, fair. I, because I know a lot of people. I think, I think they either prefer the first Blofeld, or this Blofeld. Because, God, come, come, diamonds are forever. He's such a goofball. Like that, yeah. where he's like he's making that's clones. One of my of chief, that's one of my chief complaints with diamonds are forever. Oh yeah, the the fact that he's cloning himself with mud. <laughs> that's yeah, so I got, fucking weird. Yeah, I want. I got a lot of complaints with that issue, with that movie, but yeah. I, I, but like, I mean, Grant, at least that movie's entertaining. One like this, this yeah. this movie really does. Like, there's just huge patches of nothing. Like, like I said, like, I I zoned out during yeah. a lot of it. Like there, there's like a there's like a romantic comedy scene where like bon, where we see Bond and Tracy like having like a like a in love montage, which I'm like, I don't want to fucking watch that. Yeah, like, like this, I don't this? watch Bond films for. Romantic music montages. Not, not like this. Not like this. Like if it's a hot Russian babe just in his bed naked, or like, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of some other really funny moments where Bond will just go somewhere and all of a sudden there's just a naked woman in his bed. And Moonraker. Like, Moonraker. What? <laughs> the end of Moonraker. Okay, yeah, admittedly the end. I believe of he's attempting re reentry. The end of uh, the end of uh, Man with a Golden Gun. Miss Goodnight. Good night. Good night, sir. <laughs> I love that. That's like one of my favorite moments for Bond. It's just like a good night, so. <laughs> That's actually probably one of more smoother ones too. But yeah. um, but I mean, granted, yeah. I and the best part about Lazenby's performance is it's so bad they had to dub him over during the professor scene. That's not even his voice. He spends like half this movie redubbed to pretend to be like a German. I say it was German. Yeah, it was German. Yeah, German I, geologist. The, <laughs> the interesting like, thing wow. I found was that they have Bond's crest in it, right? Oh, yeah, they and do. And his, his, his family motto is, the world is, is not, not enough. enough. And I'm like, fucking really? Well, yeah, That's where this... I didn't know that was... I, it had totally slipped oh, you, my mind that was where that had come from. Like, I completely had forgotten it. I want to say Skyfall. That, they actually, that actually is the name of, like, his, his family home is Skyfall. Like, that's actually from, like, the original books. Yeah. You know, it... it you know, it's just, to be fair, Fleming's Fleming's home is called Goldeneye. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that is true. It is called Goldeneye. I, yeah, I, I can't even remember where are the gadgets in this film, or did it, was there gadgets? Watch. No, no. Um. Again, I zoned out. I, yeah. I can't remember. <clears throat> I I can't remember the gadgets much in this either. And yeah, which, I, which to me, that's like, that's like the ultimate crime a movie can commit, in my opinion, is if. <clears throat> It's so boring, I zone the fuck out, and I yeah. don't remember what the hell's going on. Yeah, true. It's going to be, that's and why it, I'm... It, it shouldn't <clears throat> be a Bond movie that does that, you know? A Bond yeah. movie should be, it should kind of grip you from the get-go. Like, yeah. you know, like, you're you're in the middle of the moment, you know? Like... Yeah. You just don't get that in this film. No. And probably one of the dumber scenes for me is when Money Penny's at his wedding, and she's crying at, like... And I'm like, thanks. Bro. I think this is where the movie where like them having the same actress for Money Penny is kind of starting to show because she's getting a little, I, and I hate saying this because it makes me sound sexist, but like she's getting a little too old to be Money Penny, like because like Money Penny's supposed to be kind of young and vivacious, but like here it just doesn't work. Cause, like I, like this is the same Money Penny we've had since Doctor No. So I I want to say in 
one of the more films they they get a new a new secretary for M, <laughs> so that Bond can hit on her while making jokes with Money Penny, which I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. So um, like I said, this would like we discussed earlier, this would <clears throat> be the last, the first and last for Lazenby. Maybe. Although he in the eighties he would capitalize a lot on this, like he would show up in movies where like yeah. he would play a very Bond like character. Yeah. Because after this, you know they. They were willing to stick with him, but his agent was like, you need to get away from this because Bond isn't going to be able to survive, like, the 70s. Yeah, because they thought so, spy thrillers were going to be out with the 70s, which is fucking hilarious in, in hindsight. Hind, yeah, hindsight's always <coughs> amazing. Yeah. So after this, they went back to Connery, and, then, and then Connery was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Which, of course, brought never us... Never again will I be Bond. Be and then later on again... Never say never, never say again. Never again. Which we will get to We will eventually. get to. I need to watch we, it. I, I've we never need to wait it. until after we get more done, because that's, like, right around the same era that took place. Yeah, I, then I... I I think we. I want to kind of do a little bit more of the official before we go into the Never <laughs> Say Never. You're just trying to put off watching Casino Royale. <laughs> the Woody Allen one? No, we're not... Yeah, it we doesn't are. fucking count. We're not, not doing Never that. Say Never Again. It's definitely not canon. At least it has Roger... Or it has Sean Connery in it. At least it's about fucking... You don't want to watch Jimmy Bond? <laughs> it looks like I want to watch Jimmy Bond. Actually, you know what? Why don't, we, why don't we bring up some of the some of the other weird, not like kind of not official Bonds real quick while we're doing this? We just, we just did all of them basically. Yeah. Well, I mean, we could just I mean like talk about them, not just because. Like, well, to be fair, Casino Royale I've never watched. Oh, the, the Jimmy Bond one I've seen bits of. Well, just Never more, Say Never Again is the only one I have watched the entire. Well, time. Not the, not Never Say Never, but like we could just kind of bring them up, like in in terms of the history. It's kind of know. around this point where they were coming up, like yeah. they were pop. Um, like they were the the whole Bond thing. It, Bond had become so big at that point, you know, they were spoofing it a lot. Yeah, um, I actually know that there is a movie with Sean Connery's brother in that MST3K has done. It was actually supposed. They actually kind of try to say that he's the brother of James Bond without saying he's the brother of James Bond. I want to say it's it's Danger Death Ray is what it's called, which is and about it's fucking terrible. You know, it's like I, only watch it if you're watching Mystery Science Theater where, where as they're riffing the film because it it's so dull. It you know because it, it it's just a generic spy thriller from the sixties. You know, and if I want to watch a generic Imagine spy, paying th- money back then to see that. Well, I don't think I don't think you. I think this was actually originally a TV film. I was even that. Imagine wasting your time, time to, on a on a night me, watching, watching that. that. Especially when you only had like three channels and nothing else is on. At that point, I'd be like, "Fuck, I'm gonna read a book." <laughs> um, the Jimmy Bond one we're talking about. So there was a TV show back in the fifties. Fifties, yeah, where they they used to do plays live because that was just the thing they did, and also because. So one of the weird growing pains television had was trying to rerun programming. Um, I know this at least for the British side of things that <clears throat> there was a th- the thing where actors were like, no, you don't you don't record us. If you want to show it again, you bring us all on and we perform it again, fresh and live. You know, so like it basically would vary wildly. In co- so a lot of TV shows would do would do performances of books and plays, and they would do them live and record them. And one such was I forget what this TV show was called, but it. They did Casino Royale, only they they modified it for American audiences because like they weren't sure a lot of people would get the references. For one, James is not called James Bond; he's literally called Jimmy Bond, which is fucking hilarious. hilarious. That's a meme. Um, Jimmy Bond. I actually want to say he doesn't drink martini, a vodka martini in this. He drinks like some other like like I think he drinks a gin and tonic, <laughs> which I'm like what. Um, the other thing is they don't play Baccarat in this. They just play poker because I, B- Baccarat's more of like a British thing than it is, or, than it is like an American thing. Like, I even want to say the, the Daniel Craig version, they don't play Baccarat. They actually just play poker because nobody really plays Baccarat anymore. And it's okay. It's just kind of a... Peter. <laughs> yeah, like the acting's it's fucking dumb. Yeah, it's really dumb, and the acting's not very good because they're 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 theater they're theater actors, and they're trying to not overact for the film, but like or for TV. But it it just it doesn't work, and you can kind of tell that like some of them are forgetting their lines. 
it's it's really bad. And for a while, it was like well, I think one of the only ways you could see Casino Royale. But I remember I think Ian Fl- Ian Fleming like hated. Oh yeah, he it. fucking hated it. I'm pretty sure. It's it's why like it it was dead for like years yeah. until someone found it and put it up on archive.com. <laughs> Well, that and then you have the other Casino Royale, which came about because the le- the movie rights for that were technically tied up with a different company because they had sold that to the TV company to make that one. So they were they were able the, another company was able to make that one, the, yeah. the 1967 one with Woody Allen, which is which is fucking. <clears throat> I've heard people say it's it's fun. I've personally never watched it. I do own yeah. it. <clears throat> um, and to be fair, Woody Allen's only. Uh, He's only in a section because the idea is like like each scene is like done like a different style of Bond at the time because it, it was made in like the eighties sixty seven oh sixty seven okay. I literally just said it was sixty seven yeah, it was sixty seven but like it it's funny because like I think like that Bond is played by a different actor like every scene and one of them is Woody Allen is as James Bond which is fucking surreal. The whole um, movie is, is fucking surreal. surreal. Like there's a scene when like Ursula Anders oh. you know A.K. Honey Rider. Who shows up in like a Scottish outfit and blows people away with like a machine gun hidden in her like uh, bagpipe? I'm like, what? what Are you think, didn't that happen later in a later Bond film? No, not that I remember. Maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking of a spy thriller. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking of a spoof. maybe you're misremembering. You know, I'm thinking. I think I'm thinking of a spoof. I think I'm thinking of Spy Hard. The Leslie Nielsen one was with Weird Al Yankovic doing the opening theme. Um, yeah, they, they, like. So there were a lot of weird little like things like that that were happening around the time, especially, especially because Bond fever was a thing when when this film was coming out. Like, I mean, you had shows at that time, like you know, The Man, Man from, from Uncle, Uncle, Get uh, Smart, Get Smart. You had uh, all these like shows that were like trying to co- like trying yeah, to ape on the, the ape on it, and then you had other you had countless other movies, movies that were trying to do the exact same thing. Danger, Death Ray. Uh, oh, it, there's a bunch There's so of so many it. that you can't even really think of. Well, them. then like, I know just so many. I know Mystery Science Theater did a bunch of spy thrillers. Castle of Fu Manchu is technically a spy thriller because <laughs> it's it's about these spies trying to get into the castle of Fu Manchu to stop him from making a weather machine. Which don't watch, don't watch Castle that. of Fu Manchu. Not just because it's racist and has Chris- casual sixties racism. Yeah. Christopher Lee plays Fu Manchu. I know. I know. I've seen it. You don't want to watch it. Is why I'm well, telling you. Only, I've suffered like, enough. Not only is it racist, it's boring as shit. It is one of the most like it's so boring. Like not even Mystery Science Theater made it funny. Like it was actually one of the few films when they put it out. It was. It was actually painful to watch. Like you can't even enjoy them when they're riffing because like there's nothing to riff. They had no material. There's no material to, to be riffing on here. That's actually why, like, they, they made a rule for MST3K after that that was like, we actually have to watch it first, and we actually it has to actually be, like, so bad it's funny. Not so bad it's it's actually painful to watch, because nobody wants to sit through that. Um, what, what would you rate this Bond film if we were to rate it? Uh, out of ten, I would probably give it... I'd probably give it like a five, and I feel like I'm being generous. Honestly, I'd probably say it's a four. It's it, and that mostly goes to the fact that Lazenby is just not very good. <laughs> like I, I just don't buy him as Bond. No, I really he, don't. He's not nearly. He's not smooth. He there, there's no there's no on screen presence. Yeah, you know when Connery walks in, yeah. or even more or Brosnan or Dalton yeah. when they walk into a scene, you know they command the scene. Yeah, you know. I don't get that from from Lazenby yeah, like, at like, all. Say what you will if you if you're one of those people that thinks all the more films are really bad just because they they're a little bit little bit lighter than like more like Connery's Bond. At least he he had the the presence to be Bond. Like like yeah, Lazenby looks good, but man, he just he he couldn't act. He like I I've said I've had wooden nickels that were less wooden than him. Like, they, they, he, yeah, like, <clears throat> then, like, even the further that, the plot is just so dull. Like, there's, like, the plot with Spectre is nonsensical and lame, and even in the end, it doesn't even work out because, like, the the base blows up. Like, the most memorable thing about this movie is Tracy, and even then, Tracy's not in a lot of it, and most people only remember Tracy because she dies. <clears throat> Like, which is hilarious because, like, after this film, it's kind of, it vacillates whether or not they even remember Tracy. 
like Diamonds Are Forever opens on Vaughn just going around killing members of Spectre. And they never even bring up why he's just going around killing members of Spectre. Like, they don't even bring up it's like revenge for Tracy or anything like that. He literally is just, hello, I'm James Bond. I'm here to just kill people and bang chicks in bikinis. Like, Connery's Bond doesn't even, like, seem to give a shit about Tracy. Oh, he's in denial. <laughs> well, because I, I want to say, like, the next time you, it's, it's like three or four movies later and it's The Spy Who Loved Me. Yeah. Like, no other Bond film for a while, does it? And then, I think even then, the next time is... During one of Dalton's movies. Yeah, I, I want to... Oh, I forget Living what it Daylights? is. I want to say it's Living Daylights or... The, License to Kill. I think it's actually License to Kill. I want to say it's actually License to Kill. Because it's... And again, I need to watch the Dalton films again. I think, I think I've only watched Those one. are the only ones I don't... I, I, I own them on the Blu-ray set. Out of all the Bond movies available on VHS... His are the ones I have never once ran into. Probably because nobody bought them. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't mean to be rude, but that's... Like, I... The ones I had, I found hardest to find when I was, when I started my Bond VHS collection, which, check it out over on my channel. I do a quick run-through of what my Bond VHS collection is at the moment. Um, the two hardest ones I had to run into, besides the Dalton ones, which I've never ran into. Yeah. View to a Kill, which I finally found recently. Yeah. Die Another Day, and that's because Die Another Day came out tail yeah. end of the VHS run, which I did. I did. I do have it. Yeah, I remember renting that from Hollywood Video. Yeah, I do have it. It's an ex rental copy too. Yeah. But those ones and Man with the Golden Gun is one I've never run into either. See, Man with the Golden Gun, I, I think people like that enough that they don't. They just don't want to get rid of it. Because like I, that's the only one I for more I don't have. Yeah, because View to a Kill, I get white. Probably nobody, again, that, that when we get to the more ones, that's, like, honestly the worst more film. And that's saying something about well, more. It, it took me a while to find that one. That's saying something about more because I love more, but there are some stinkies in that. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a we're gonna have a field day when we get to more because... It, uh, it's all over the place. It's all over the place in quality. Um, But it, Dying of the Day, I get why people probably... Because I know, I know what people's feelings are on Dying of the Day. Which, God. when we get to it, I actually like Die Another I mean, I actually like it, too. It's certainly the weakest out of Brosnan's It's run, definitely but. the weakest. I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's not nearly as franchise-ending as a lot of people act like it is. I think a lot of people just need to quit acting like uh, the Bourne identity is so, so great. Yeah. <laughs> but. Anyway, getting back on track. Well, so you have a 4 out of 10, I have a 5 out of 10. Yeah. And again, I think I'm being generous with this. Yeah, I was about to say, you're probably being... I, I definitely... there were parts of the film I did like. I do. Yeah. I, I like certain aspects of it. I just think, overall, it, it doesn't fire on all cylinders. No, it... it it's... And I think a lot of it's just because they... They weren't sure about what they were going to do once, like, Connery left. I, I don't even know if they really... I think part of them didn't even know they wanted to keep making Bond films after he left. But, you know, they end up dead. <laughs> And of course, you know, after this, they did one more with Bond, with Connery, which I think actually was probably a smart decision on their move before they, you know, make getting the next guy. Well, and even then, they were considering other people, but I believe it was MGM basically said, uh, yeah, no, get Connery, all costs. Yeah, no, because like... Because they, they hit him up at the 11th hour. Yeah, because they were like, we we need a hit. <laughs> so I'll say MGM was actually kind of doing bad at the time. Not like terribly bad, but like they, they needed Bond to like get them a... A, a good hit, but well, the British film industry at that point was doing pretty bad. I mean, that was why yeah. Hammer at that point was filming movies like back to back to back on yeah. the same sets. Well, then I want to say that's why like United Films and ended up getting bought by MGM, which is what let you know. Yeah, the British film industry at that point was really taking a rough turn. Yeah, probably because a lot of it had to do with the fact that like that time period for filmmaking was just rough all in, in general. Because, like, it, it was kind of like, you know, like, stuff like animated shorts were dying out before films, like, you know, the, the PSA, like, all, like, film was kind of having to conquer down just because of television. Not completely dying, like a lot of people back then thought, but it, you didn't have to go to the, the theater for, like, news or, like, <laughs> stuff that you can get on television is yeah. much easier. So, a, a lot of, 
a lot of the cinema industry had to really dial it back. Like, I know that's what happened, like, why a lot of, like, independent film making things went belly up at that time. Like, you know, like, the guys that made, like, Man of Hands of Fate, or, like, you know, movie the movie studios that would, like, like, existed in Pennsylvania and, like, uh, like other states completely folded and why most of our filmmaking takes place in Hollywood is because of just the way media changed at the time. As someone who was a comm major and can tell you about, like, how when new media is created, it, it kind of forces everything to change in a way. You know, like, with when radio, when TV became a thing, radio, you know, they stopped doing, like, serialized radio stories and stuff like that. Because, like, you didn't need to do that. You could, you could watch TV and get the same thing, but way better. <laughs> um, you know, like, that... They, it's like what we're going through now with the internet and such. Only much on a much di different scale, honestly. But anyway, guys, I think really we could probably wrap up there because <laughs> there's just not much to talk about. And I, that's part of the reason why I did want to do Majesty now, just because it's like we might as well get that out of the way so we can get to get to more, which is like the much more interesting thing to talk about. And we'll have more to talk about anyways. Um... However, we won't be getting to that next week. Uh, next week, we've got something a little bit more uh, comic booky and more related to the MCU. So, uh, look forward to that. But uh, until then, guys, as always, I'm Zongetsu134. And I'm Average Joe Squad. And as always, we ask you... Remember the hyphen? And take care.